Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. 2024. It's almost here. And I I think it's gonna be a good year. I know a lot of us said that about 2020, so I'm not gonna say the year. It's not gonna be my year. I think it's just gonna be a good year. <laughs> Something and it feels good. You know, there's 24 hours in a day. If you, you know, split the months, you have 24 little sections. There was a decent okay-ish TV show of the same name. Just go with me here. Okay. I'm already thinking about 2024 because for a few years now, I've started using December as my test run. I am a big resolution, new year, new me kind of person. Sometimes I wish I wasn't, but I, I love the feel of it. But I am also the sort of person who shoots way, 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 way too high. And I have gotten better, or I've been forced to get better for health reasons <laughs> at uh, not beating myself up when the super high goals don't work out, but that is also what December is for. I love this time because I can dream as big as I want to with no pressure. December is my time to test out these goals and temper back my expectations, my due dates, everything just like a smidge. It is my favorite time of year now because of this. <laughs> <laughs> now, 2023 saw me attempting quarterly goals at the start of the year. I'd never really done that in full before. I've seen a lot of my writer friends like Becca. Becca is doing her sort of 90 day challenge again. I'm gonna link it down below for her announcement video of that, which is so cool. And I know just a lot of authors who like to segment themselves into the quarters. There's something nice about that. It's a good amount of time to get a big goal done or to get a section of a big goal done, like drafting the story or revising it or whatever. But that quickly morphed into doing things seasonally for me, still sort of in the quarters, but not as regimented with, you know, January, February, March. Um, kind of switching it up and making my own quarters out of things. I have tried monthly goal planning before, and while there's aspects of it I really like, uh, it has by far and away not really worked for me. I also want to try bullet journaling in full this year, or at least some of the tracking. I'm having to get into tracking for health stuff, and I was like, I would like to make this more fun. <laughs> if I'm gonna have to be tracking what feels like a lot of aspects of my life, I would like for them to be entertaining to me. And recently I tried a new to me sort of planning, which is with the lunar cycle, with the moon as my guide. I have vlogged that along the way. We'll talk about pros and cons, but Yes. So this video is just going to be kind of chatty, kind of vloggy, all of the things as I do some planning for December, um, but also for 2024. One of the big parts of this is that I have a whole Notion um, page that I'm kind of just, jot I've been jotting down notes in when y'all have told me about monthly challenges. I feel like December tends to be sort of like a dead month for a lot of us, um, especially on the backs of a big challenge like NaNoWriMo. Um, but a lot of people like to participate in JanuWriMo. There's NaNoEdmo, National Novel Editing Month. I believe that's in March. And I've just been a little sponge as I take in all of these fun challenges that y'all have told me about, put them on my little list, and I'm excited to incorporate that into my overarching goals for the year. And the first thing I want to dive deeply in on is this concept of 24 and 24. I have heard Sarah mention it. I've heard people on Twitch mention it. I have found some bullet journal people because Jessica told me about them. And I just generally love the idea of 24 big-ish goals throughout the whole year of 2024. Another part of this would be doing 24 of iterations of a certain thing in 2024. There's some, there's so many cool twists on stuff. I am entertained. Anyways, I have a list going and this is really going to be the basis for my overall year and how I break things down, whether that is seasonally, quarterly or monthly. All of the things need to wrap into helping me accomplish these 24 and 24. Okay, let's talk about it. So I have moved this 24 and 24 up to my favorites list. <laughs> um, and you can see I actually included the monthly writing challenges in it but we wanna look at the 24 and 24. So I started by brainstorming this list. This is the notebook. <laughs> While I was waiting for a friend at a coffee shop, look at this beautiful mess of circles. Because this is the mess that my brain is in most of the time, I then put it in a list later. But it, it takes a few pages, you know? There's an evolution of thought. Slightly more organized, still more circles. More bubbles. With a brief aside for my December project, brainstorming to eventually come up with my list. 
the full list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven publishing goals, two podcast goals, and two reading goals. You'll note that at the top it is work in quotes. <laughs> then I have some of my health goals and hobby goals, which I've broken down into crochet, cooking, and Spanish. To the side here I have the three months, so this is December, January, and February, because for a whole novel it probably takes me on average one or two quarters to finish a draft. That's thrown off a little bit by how much Project Death specifically has taken me compared to other stuff, but yes, I have found that out over time. And that can be two, three novel length projects over the course of a year that I'm getting drafts done in with the occasional thrown in novellas and short stories. So just kind of timing things wise. But recently I stumbled across this article that is the astronomical versus versus the meteorological meteorological <laughs> seasons. And basically not that every single thing needs to have a reason, but I loved that they argue that if you go about it this way, the meteorological season, December 1st is the start date. Which just again feels right in my little heart. This is what I'm going with now. I wrote down the important holidays or some important holidays. So I have like the actual new year, I have lunar new year, Yule and Imbol. And then flipping the page, I have the start of this for my test month of December. In which you'll notice there is a YouTube section that was not on this other page. No 24 and 24 is YouTube related. And that's in part because I do have those seven publishing or publishing adjacent goals. So one of them is enter monthly short story contests. Another one is like querying project death. So publishing adjacent. And because there are so many, I really just want to take this first month and this first quarter to sort of scale back some of the YouTube stuff in order to make room for the other goals. But I do still want to post on YouTube because I love YouTube. And so I've actually figured out which two videos I'm going to be posting each month. And that has been really nice and pretty freeing uh, to really like zone in on just two. I have for a long time really enjoyed just whenever the inspiration strikes me doing stuff, which has worked so far um, to varying degrees of success. <laughs> but this will also allow me to do like longer form videos. So one of them is I've started logging my 100 hours of drafting, which is gonna take quite a bit of time. I'm trying to do it all in one project, unless of course I finish the project in the 100 hours. I don't think that's gonna happen. But one of them is handwriting the skeleton draft of Bejeweled, which I'm gonna take at least all of December to do. So just kind of long form things. Yeah, as someone with over 700 videos, I think it's gonna be fun to hunker in on six for the next three months. Oh my gosh. Look at this ham. Look at this ham. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Jealous beach has come. So I have about half of my December goals filled in. It is almost December. So I want to fill in the rest of these, but that's going to require filling out and figuring out which of the 24 and 24 are going to really slot in to the first quarter. So let's take a little bit of time and do that. Okay, once again I have brain dumped onto the page. So <laughs> basically what I want to do is make sure that no more than three things are active at any one time and I Think, with the exception of February, I've kind of figured that out. So I feel solid about the current December plans and I will reevaluate as I'm going into January. I've already accepted that for the most part I'll be working on a closet full of cauldrons and project death, my NaNoWriMo projects, through to December. But how soon in December will I finish them? TBD. And I also added submitting to Black Hair Press and Apex monthly that I didn't have before. My cooking slash recipes is kind of open for right now. I have some more meetings with my doctor coming up and so we're gonna be discussing some of my gastro stuff um, and what I can and can't eat. So I'm kind of leaving that open but a big theme for the year for my cooking journey is that we've been making recipes based on each F1 race location, which has been really fun. And I'd like to test out um, some five course meal options. Like one week do a soup, another week a salad, the next one a main, and just kind of play around with it. I'm guessing I'm going to be doing a lot more veggie heavy dishes. So anyways, I'm just gonna kind of leave that one blank for now. Plus side is my appointment is before November is done. So hopefully I will be able to fill this in before December. That would be lovely. And the fun part of some of these goals is that they're fun. 
is that I've had them for a long time. Uh, like learning to speak Spanish. I'm trying again. <laughs> there are a lot of things you can say about my goal achieving abilities, but my ability to try is just somehow always there. <laughs> because my overall Spanish goals for the year are to hit a 100 day streak on Duolingo and to practice 30 minutes each weekday, I think that this is gonna come down to the systems I have in place and forming habits. So like this morning, uh, I took my blood pressure. It's something that can serve as sort of an anchor point for me because I have to do it first thing when I wake up. And then I turn and I make my cappuccino and that's just, you know, an enjoyable thing. If it's not gonna be a cappuccino, maybe it's a tea, just like a warm beverage. And then immediately getting to work after that. So maybe if instead of immediately getting to work, I could sub in like drinking my coffee while I'm doing Duolingo, that would really serve as like a perfect you know, I'm piling on the habits. It's easier to add on to that than to start a completely new one. And so I'm thinking that might be the way. This is the way. <laughs> Another goal like this is to journal daily. That's one of the few things that I really loved when I was doing the morning pages goal is just kind of getting that brain dump out fresh. So maybe a like lovely morning routine of blood pressure, coffee or tea, Spanish, and then journaling and then I can start my work day. That also kind of eases me into not always starting work immediately. Could be kind of nice. That's what December's for, to test it out. Now my actual journal, like the one I take all my notes in, is going to be a little bit different from my bullet journal, and bullet journaling is something that I've been wanting to get into, and is actually why I bought this notebook that I have right here. It comes with the index already in it. I know some people love setting this up themselves, but I'm kind of in a, the less I have to do myself, the better probably. <laughs> but the key, the index, and I'm excited to have this here. And actually I've recently taken one of Skillshare's classes. Who's the sponsor of today's video? So let's let's do a quick shout out to Skillshare, especially Dylan Merzwinski's class. Bullet journaling, life management for creatives. She takes a really wonderful approach to bullet journaling and talks about how she had started and stopped and tried multiple times over, which is where I am at. And so it felt nice to have someone come to it and sort of teach me with that experience and kind of what helped her stick with it. She also has this whole thing called flailures, which I really appreciated. Gonna start using that term. She goes through all of the basics with you, like what migration means and kind of the bujo lingo. Bujo lingo. <laughs> One of the failures I really loved hearing her talk about was sort of abandoned projects. She talks a lot throughout the course about like her own ADHD diagnosis and like tips to handle procrastination, which I found very helpful, but just the mindset around when you set up a spread and you end up just not using it and how that's okay because it's better to have attempted, better to have made the spread in the first place because then you tried. And also because oftentimes you will have learned a specific lesson that allowed you to abandon it and pivot. And so in that way, it's like a really nice reminder. And that's the kind of mindset that I need to be taking in. Also, this class does have a whole like live Q&A um, that there's the replay of in the back of the class, which I found super helpful. I've also taken and retaken Via Aslani's class, Character Illustration, A Beginner's Guide to Drawing Fun and Expressive Faces, because I have loved stickers. I'm enjoying getting to put them in my normal journal and my bullet journal and my planner, but also I would love to make like little iterations of me or the dogs or whatever. And I have like the worst hand-eye coordination, but she makes it so easy and so fun. And as someone who like has attempted this multiple times before and never really clicked until now, it is not perfect, but I am excited to have the Bujo to get to track how the face evolves over time. <laughs> over all of 2024. So if these interested you, I do recommend you checking them out. Skillshare also has a wide variety of classes, tons of classes and tons of different topics from graphic design to animation to music production to marketing to writing, of course. Skillshare has classes to take you from beginner to pro alongside a wonderful supportive community. And the first 500 of y'all to click my link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And as of this recording, it is still NaNoWriMo so let's go ahead and attempt another face to show off how well I have done on my word count today. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm hoping for a big smile. 6,151 words today. 
very happy. <laughs> I aimed for the crooked smile, but I didn't add the glasses or the hat today, so I might uh, get better as I go. But 6,151 words for NaNoWriMo today, so. One of the other things I'm trying to set up is the habit tracker. So I did a bit of a test run in my other journal, but what I want to do is put it in my actual bullet journal that I'm going to be using. I think the habit tracker aspect is the part of the bullet journal philosophy. Um, what has spun off of it that I'm most excited for? I often track for a little bit. I track for maybe three weeks even, but then eventually I, that all falls off. Now that I'm being forced to track for some things. I'm hoping that if I have it all on one page altogether, it'll be the cue I need to track all of the other things and just another cue to do things like my yoga each day and act as another check for my Duolingo and things like that. So let me draw that out. I saw a bunch of really fancy habit trackers all over the place, which I think are so fun, but ultimately like I am not at that level yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> I have all the girls in here with me. <laughs> all right, I am now feeling pretty set up for December. I'm gonna talk about this in like my lessons learned from NaNoWriMo video, but there were a couple of things that I've done in November that I would like to replicate in December. Besides just the mindset I had in freeing myself from the daily vlogs combined with the like stress uh, I was feeling with all the doctor's appointments and just kind of really letting myself still do my best but understanding when too much was too much kind of thing. Um, that's something I've preached for a while but it has been harder to put into practice so I'm glad to see myself like actually doing it not you know feeling like I was in turmoil forever before I made that decision. I really enjoyed having my weekends off so that's something that I want to continue to do work-wise. At times it set me up to have a harder week, which is why I ended up with 6,000 plus words today, right? Because I didn't write on the weekends, I honored that, but I'd also felt poorly on the like Thursday and Friday before, so didn't get nearly as much stuff done as I'd hoped throughout the week, but I'm starting to understand myself and how easy it is to fall into the cycle of to like, oh, I'll just make up for it in some other time, but instead I just fret about it all the time. <laughs> and I also really loved having a streaming project. It motivated me to not only work on my project because I wanted to hang out with other writers and chat with them and how it's going, but then I sometimes just wanted to stream so that I could work on the project. It was nice having that really dedicated time to work on it and also allowing myself a freedom of the mind, I guess, to think about other things outside of that time. Heather has talked a lot about having a kind of writer wardrobe, which is an experiment I've done before, but I really, really, really like the idea of, I just need a little bit more writer merch. <laughs> but in some ways having that streaming project serve the same sort of effect of being like, okay, now it is writing time or whatever all the time is writing time, but now it is this project specifically time. And before I was kind of doing a morning project and an afternoon project, but I feel like this is much better. <laughs> One streaming project and then a project I'm working on all the time outside of streaming, and then occasional novellas, short stories, whatever just sort of floats my fancy. <laughs> so it's really gonna be fun to see the day in and day out of December as this goes along. I am actually going to be taking a little bit of time off um, in that I will be away from home but still working, so some of this will be kind of harder to put into practice, potentially, or it'll be an even greater challenge. That could be quite fun, I'm thinking now. <laughs> now the origin of this video was actually inspired by a different experiment I was undertaking, which was writing with the lunar cycle, choosing one project, Project Death, to focus on over the course of one full moon cycle, which was something I'd found out about through the tarot uh, book that I picked up when I was on the writing retreat in Ohio. There is a whole moon cycle spread and it asks specific questions along the way for what each cycle of the moon, what the card you're pulling, what to focus on. So I wanna share some of the footage from that time and then I will pop back in at the very end to tell you my overall thoughts on this. <laughs> 
on Riding with the Moon. <laughs> the extra fun part about this is that I got to start my experiment on the day of the eclipse and so I decided to take my deck out and charge it, end quotes, underneath the sun and the moon. This was basically just as I'd gotten back from my trip to Ohio and also about two-ish weeks, two and a half maybe, before the start of NaNoWriMo. All right, new moon. Let's do our first poll. Now, like with almost everything right now, it is all about project death. So going into this first card. New moon is beginning. Think about a goal you have and draw the first card. Does this card work in harmony with that or does it seem at odds? Will this path be smooth or difficult? Let's find out which of the cards. Whoop. King of Blades. So in this deck, the blades are basically the swords, represents mental matters and circumstances we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, dreams, thoughts, and fears of the themes that dominate the suit. Life's challenges are expressed in these cards, so expect to put in hard work when they appear. The blades can cut the ties that hold us back, but they are also capable of inflicting great pain, so wield them with care. The element is air, the season is fall. Ooh, initiated by the first day of Libra. That's quite interesting, okay. King of Blades. Also the last card. Um, as a situation, with this card you can break free from old bonds and start the process of getting your act together. Use your intellect and reason to remove obstacles and negative influences in your life. Think about what you would cut out of your life if given the opportunity, then take control and get it done. Ooh. Does this card work in harmony with that? I think it definitely works in harmony with that. Break free from old bonds and start the process of getting your act together kind of exactly what this time feels like. So I need to make progress by subtracting. Okay, I will think this over. Thank you, new moon. All right, I'm at 34,734 and fully into the fun and games section. I have my coffee with me to start the day. Oh, some little shadows. But before that, I think I'm going to pull another card. Oh, I've been gone for so long. So if this is the new moon, basically all along here is the waxing crescent until we get to the first quarter moon. So because it's my first work day back, I figured this could help guide me. <laughs> oh, awesome. We got the sun as much as I love the moon love pulling a sun. They're both. So the question for the waxing crescent moon is the initiative. Now that you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve and what the journey will be like, what should your initial steps be to get things moving? The appearance of the sun card indicates that a new day has begun. All that is great in your life is illuminated by bright light and it is time to celebrate. Everything you worked for will now come into focus. There's no room for self-doubt or low self-esteem with this card. Okay, I feel like that's important. It's funny because on the retreat, the girls really helped me pull out of being so focused on the word counts and just get the story done in the way it needs to be done. So continuing my practice of reviewing what really needs to be there, cutting when I can, but not feeling bad when I'm not hitting the milestones that I've set for myself. So that energy, I think, is what's pulling this forward as it's my first work day on it since I'd finished the retreat and on the retreat. Y'all have already seen this, but I got like 13,000 words or something. I got a lot of words, 16,000 words. I think that's what I need to go into it with is just basically a not looking back. I have made my decision. It is full steam ahead. And that's what I need for this week. Coincidentally, I also am starting my streams again this week. So maybe that's how I can spread some positivity. On stream, encouraging others. We're nearing NaNoWriMo. Okay, let me write this down and then we'll get started. Coffee done. I think I've had a bit of an idea. Um, it's a small thing, kind of a tangential idea to something that's already in the book, um, but I think it might give me the title of this project. Project that might finally have a title I like. <laughs> 
I'll need to run it past Jess once she's read the book um, because it is like, it'll be directly in the book and I love when that happens. So it might work. It might, it might have to be a variation of it, but I think it could work. Yay. <laughs> is this the positive sun vibes? I don't know, but I will take it. Up 381, a baby scene done, and now... We only have a few days left until NaNoWriMo is here, and I have a list of things that I still want to get done before November 1st. I sometimes forget in all of my prepping that part of preparing for NaNoWriMo to come is doing some of the things I can in October that I don't want to have to do in November when I'm trying to focus so much on the words. So I'm going to try and see how many of these 12 items I can check off the list and actually I can already check off one. Oh, look at that sun. I put cut my hair on the list. It cut. It was getting far too long and uh, I just knew that I would not take the time to do it during November. So done. <laughs> But to accomplish some of these, we're going to have to get on the road. Firstly, because I have a doctor's appointment that I am fasting for, I gotta get some blood work done. And it's on the other side of town, so I thought it would be fun to stop by the library and get some of my work done there while taking in all the great inspiration that a library provides. Right, I found a couple books that were uh, witchy, cozy mystery. I wanted to grab some just so that I could kind of be surrounded by other books like this. I'm on the hunt for some like more updated ones. I think I'll actually ask the librarian at my library and see if they have any, but love it, love it. All right, finally to the doctor. <laughs> civic duty done. He had a lot of new constitutional amendments up for the state and uh, gotta get my early vote on so that I don't have to do it during November. <laughs> mm. Since I was on this side of town, my husband had me stop by and get his favorite soy sauce while I was shopping. Rewards for during nano. <laughs> 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 I love you. <laughs> I love you too, thank you. Good morning. It is Tuesday, October 31st. It is Halloween. Now we're over halfway through the moon cycle. Oh, little groan. And I have truly taken what it has said recently to heart. I have, you know, started anew in some ways <laughs> with this idea of the visual representation and putting all of my scene cards where they align. I have one more Patreon stream today in like 20 minutes. I have a Twitch stream I wanna do, and then of course, it is Halloween. I also am still part of the way through cleaning the room 
which I want to do just to set myself up the best I can for success during nano. Just declutter. Don't let that be part of my mind. Any distractions I can clear away, I'm going to clear away. But because it's Halloween, I do want to pull like one extra card. Um, not necessarily part of the moon cycle, but just to like, you know, any additional push I might need for Project Death as, as nano starts. <sighs> Oh my gosh, so good. So I'm really just gonna pull one card. And my question is, what do I need to know to guide me today and through NaNoWriMo? Oh my gosh, 10 of coins. I am really getting some repeated messages. That is the same note I got for the full moon. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. The Ten of Coins brings fulfillment and gratitude. You have everything you need and a bit extra for security. When you were hustling and struggling, a kind word or thank you went a long way to boost your mood, did it not? I feel like that is the message I need to take forth during NaNoWriMo. Kind word or thank you. Maybe something I could do every day too. I have been wanting to go back. Some of the magic of NaNoWriMo for me was in those first few years of daily vlogs. I was watching everyone else's, we were all commenting, and so then I formed my friendship with Becca and with Jessica, and maybe it's telling me that, you know, I need to, if I'm gonna do the daily vlogs again, if I'm gonna really harken back to this time, I need to commit. I need to be watching other people's videos, I need to be commenting, leaving my novel length comments once more. Maybe that's it. Okay. Okay. I love it. All right, let us get to work, see if we can't finish this. Admittedly, as soon as NaNoWriMo started, I lost a bit of focus. Uh, a lot of my doctor's appointments started piling up, I was doing the daily vlogs, I was trying to write 3,000 plus words every weekday, and do streams daily, and anyways, I got a little bit off track, which I think could arguably be reflected in the cards that I did ultimately pull. But honestly, outside of the pulls, I didn't really think too much about them. All of it ultimately compounding because, you know, my big goal was to finish Project Death and give it to Jess at the start of this moon phase. But did I accomplish that within the time? No. So ultimately, as you could tell by all the original preamble, as I was setting things up, I did not set it up to be fully with the moon cycle. So maybe that tells you what I what I thought of this. I think there is something fun in having one main project you're focusing on and the cards kind of help you have it constantly in mind. And obviously some of the questions are like, what are the final touches going to require? So even if you pulled a card that you're like, this doesn't make sense, it, the questions kind of get you thinking, how does your goal help others? Are there rewards for achieving your goal that could be shared? Like a lot of fun things that I don't always think about as I'm setting these big goals. But I guess the ultimate um, problem I had with this one is the same thing that I feel for most monthly goals and setting, which is either I think too big and I have a problem picking a goal I can do in a month or no that's it <laughs> I love the idea of my monthly habit trackers because these are things that I'm checking in on each day but it is not a goal necessarily and all of the goals that I have for the month are really broken down based off of the bigger overarching goals for the whole year or for the quarter, right? And and that makes so much more sense to me because when I'm thinking about one individual month, for some reason my brain just does not comprehend time in the way that it needs to. And I'm like, I can do all of the things I can do in a half a year in a month. I will never understand why. Um, but <laughs> gotta work with myself here. And that is the biggest lesson I've learned this year. Please do comment down below though. I would absolutely love to know what goal setting system works for you, what tracking system works for you, what systems you've put into place, if there's anything you've discovered recently about your routine, um, whether that is stuff you love or stuff you'd like to change. Are you already thinking about 2024 and do you also use December as like a trial month? But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye.